What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Photo Booth 101 University podcast. Today is Valentine's Day, and we have our co-host here. We have Hans below, Tyler to the left, and um, happy Valentine's Day, guys. I mean, happy Valentine's Day. Hey, hey, we've been through a lot of holidays together. We've done Halloween already. We've done Thanksgiving. We've done Christmas, New Year's. We've done a lot of holiday podcasts, man. Happy Valentine's Day, guys. Happy Valentine's Day. Let's go. Love it. So let's just dive right into this. First thing I, we uh we, we should discuss here are vendor meals. What is a vendor meal? My favorite part of the, the event is that's what I would say. No, um <laughs> a vendor meals are something that um uh, is not always you know expected, but it's nice that we get it. I know some people put it in their contracts. I kind of just nudge the customer sometimes, like, hey, like we're gonna do this and this instead of giving me a tip, give me a meal, nudge, nudge. Um, but like, I kind of like let them know, like, Hey, don't make me stand there and not, you know, for four or five hours, you can have me there and not give me food and have me watch everybody eat in front of me. So, um, but yeah, man, uh, vendor meals is a pretty cool perk in this industry. Um, it's one of my favorite perks in this industry because you get to try food that, uh, otherwise you would have probably never tried. Um, probably one of the best things that I ever found out about, uh, uh, doing those gigs is, a uh, uh, authentic. I mean, uh, authentic thailand food i mean thai food like from like like grandma cooked it and like she got it in catering plates and everything oh my god that was so delicious dude so that's one of the huge breaks in this industry um how do you guys go about um asking for your vendor meals if you guys want to be fed there so what i do honestly man and i just noticed this from doing other events with my cousin when i was 13 i used to kind of watch how he would do it so i was kind of familiar with it is that I I just watch when the DJ just gets up on, like gets off to his like DJ booth when he's playing certain songs and then he'll just go to the line real quick to grab food. And I'm like, okay, I guess that's my call too. And I'll walk and I'll just stand behind him. So I'm like, if he gets in trouble, then I know he's getting in trouble first because he was in line first. <laughs> um, I, I try not to bother the guests during the, during the event. I don't really bring it up. I, I know a lot of people who actually have it on their contracts. Um, my photo booth vendor for my wedding had it on the contract that, you know, since it was a five hour event, that they had to be fed. Um, so I guess that's something you can do. I, I've seen photo booth owners do it since the one for my wedding did it. Um, no one I really know personally has done it, but I guess it's a good idea, especially if you're there for five hours. But I usually just kind of follow along with the other vendors. If I see like the photographer go up there or the DJ or like someone who's a vendor at the event, or sometimes actually the workers at the venue, like some of the staff is like, no, go eat. Like, because, you know, mm -hmm. it's their, you know, it's their business at the end of the day. Like it's not really the call of the, the guests or the client. If the venue tells you, hey, go eat, go grab then do it why not yeah yeah definitely vendor meal is basically what it sounds like you are a vendor because you're providing the photo booth and a meal is a meal um but you know what's funny if there's a buffet and people are going up to eat i'll just go up and get a plate yeah, I, I, yeah me I too by, I don't yeah. i'll live by uh don't ask permission just ask for forgiveness so if they ever say anything i'll be like oh i'm so sorry i just assumed um, you know, but no one, no one has ever done that, you know? Um, no, I don't think, I don't think so. I don't think it's a good idea to be the first person in line, you know? No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> I, don't, don't be the first. I, I usually wait for all the tables to be called and then I'll see the DJ kind of step away from his table. He'll walk and grab a plate. When I see him, I usually tell my wife like, all right, come on, let's go grab food because she's like the, she's one of those people where she's like the first one that's like, come on, let's go in the front. Let's go grab food. I'm like, no, we're waiting. And then I look at the DJ once he goes, I'm like, okay, I got the clear because the DJ is usually one of the most important people at the events that the the client works with ahead of the photo booth operator. So once I see him go, I'm like, okay, we're going. That's it. Yeah. And honestly, one of the, the negatives of doing a drop off is you don't get vendor meals because you're not there. You're dropping it off. And um, man, we've had some delicious food. Like we're talking, oh, yeah. like, you know, sometimes these, these venues and these parties, it's these people are sometimes playing like $150 a plate. Sometimes it's mm -hmm. a lobster, surf and turf, uh, scallops, um, you know, barbecue with ribs. So like, to me, it's like, and that's, that's a huge plus because um, I mean, I'm cheap. I, there's no way that like, I'm going to go out and just spend 150 on a plate, but a lot of these parties, man, will, will give you the goods. Um, you guys have any stories of any bad vendor meals? Um, like a time where it was just not good or, one where you didn't get one or is there any any stories you guys can share so i had one uh actually it was it was like this pizza from like little caesars i don't know if you guys have a little caesars over in california 
Um, and this was like a birthday party. It was nothing like the venue actually supplied the food. It was one of those venues you got to bring your own food. And I, you know, that was the most cardboard pizza. I've never tried it. That was the first time I tried it. I was like, that's the most cardboard frozen pizza I've ever ate. I was like, I should have never even tried it. But something good on the other hand is like when the venues not only like allow you to eat like their food, but then like there's appetizers. There's a lot of appetizers before the meals come out. And then like the desserts when they're when they start passing out cake and stuff like that. Like, I think Drew has said this on another podcast a, lo- a while ago, a couple months ago. I've had cake for like the next 10 birthdays. I'm good. I went, come my birthday, just like Drew said, I'm good. I don't want cake. That's the last thing I want is cake. I don't want cake. I don't want stra- chocolate covered strawberries. I don't want Italian food because I know you guys said you guys are real big on like the Mexican food over here in the venues. We do a lot of like Italian dishes over here in New York and New Jersey area. I don't want any of that stuff. Like, I'm good. <laughs> I'm, I eat too much at these events sometimes. That's funny. Yeah, Hans, did you, any 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 vendor meal stories where food wasn't good or, you know? No, nah, man. The only time I was embarrassed in front of like a couple people, but it was because um they they they, were, they only had like seltzer waters to like to like serve. They don't have actual waters, and I was thirsty, and uh, I just happened to pick up the seltzer water that was shaky and it was probably dropped. Man, I pick it up. <laughs> all over bro all over my uniform and everybody's just looking at me like damn that sucks dude and it was nighttime so it's like it didn't dry off easily so i was just like man this uh, I, I had a soaked shirt for like probably like a good like 20 minutes uh, but i mean other than that like nah, i haven't had any bad vendor meals i've had like okay vendor like i wouldn't walk any of them yeah no man um yeah too just to like clarify to clarify anyone watching like you know, some people think like, oh, you're doing a three to four hour event. Like that shouldn't be enough to ask for a meal, but there's so much work and time, mm-hmm. you know, you had to factor in the time it's taking you to get your equipment in your car, the driving, then the hour setup, then the actual event time, and then breaking down, loading up and getting home. It's a full day's work sometimes. So we're you have to be able calories. to. Boy, we're burning calories doing Dude. this, man. Yeah, yeah. Lift, lift so it up like, that phone. Putting up backdrops and stuff, you're burning calories walking in it, walking back and forth to your car. Yeah, I'm that's the first thing I look forward to at those events is when, when are you guys bringing out the food because I'm starving, dude. And like, it's uh, my crazy story is we did this event at Disney at one of their halls, it was a very expensive wedding. I wouldn't be surprised if that wedding wasn't like 80 grand. Like oh, they had, they had Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, Goofy. Everybody was there from Disney. Even Walt Disney himself. They brought him in in the freezer. Uh, so the, the <laughs> party was super, super, super high end. And food came out, buffet, all you can eat steaks, lobster. We are so excited. I'm like, my mouth is drooling. And then, boom, the coordinator comes up to us. He goes, "Oh, we have your vendor meals in the um, break room." I'm like, oh, all right, you know. I'm like, whatever, I'm sure it's going to be good. You guys, they gave me two pieces of bread with a piece of ham and cheese. And I would have sued. <laughs> I would have been like, I'm sorry, I'm going to sue you guys. And an apple. You know what I did? That's like jail food. You know what I did? I left it and I got on the line. I was like, this is crazy. This is crazy. I, I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, but like I waited until everyone ate. Then went and got my food. I'm like, bro, this is insane. The bread was stale. It's like, this was a, a learning point for me. No, um, kind of asking in advance, like, hey, you know, vendor meals and some, some. There's been a few times where they're like, oh, we only have it budgeted towards the guests, and I'm like, no problem. Uh, so what we're gonna have to do is shut down for 30 minutes. We can extend the time so we can out, go out really quick and grab something to eat. Because look, man, there, look even though you're a business owner, like you should still be able to have, you know, common, you know, business rules, like, like a work, like a work schedule. Cause yeah. I don't want to spend eight hours at an, doing it in an event and be starving. Like that makes my experience not good either. Like, so there's been times where we do that, but like that, that event, we, we now call it ham sandwich. It's like a little thing uh, my wife and I will talk about. So whenever, whenever we get a, a vendor meal and it's not the best, we'll be like, Hey, it's not a ham sandwich. Um, it's like a little inside joke yeah (laughs) but uh but yeah it was funny so then we 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 got in line and then um we got the food um and then the uh event coordinator came up to us and she was just like oh what happened you know kind of like that i was like i was like we can't eat that 
like you know and then she was like what and then she she grabbed me she goes oh my god they gave you the wrong meal like you're supposed to get this and that i'm like yeah right 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 because man she's a vendor she was i she she had a plate of food the dj had a plate of food but they gave the photo of people a ham sandwich. I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah, no. Nah, I would be like, I, I would have been like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm, I'm gonna go in line. I'm gonna grab what's left over after everyone eats, and that's, that's it. I'm sorry, but you know what's cool? I don't know if you guys ever had this, and this is actually happening for us on Friday. We have an event on Friday. It's a family friend, so it's a, it was a referral through a family member of mine. Uh, the lady's actually getting me and my wife a seat, two seats. She paid for two seats next to my, uh, cousin who got us the event. And she said, I want you guys to feel like you're at the party, like you're invited. I know you guys are working, but please sit down, eat, enjoy yourselves. We know we know the photo booth runs itself. So, like, you know, you, we know you guys are working, but, like, please enjoy the party. And I appreciated that so much. I was like, wow, like, I really appreciate that because I don't really know you from from just from a family friend. I know you, but, like, for you to say that and meet uh, us meeting for the first time, it, it felt nice for a customer or a client to actually say, like, hey, like, you you are a guest just as much as my guests are here. You know what I mean? So that felt good. And I'm like, okay, I'm I'm looking forward to Friday's event now because of that. Dude, yeah, yeah. And you know what? It, it's I love being in the LA area and doing the parties we do, the quinceañeras. Um, you know, shout out to all our Mexican clients, man. That's when we get the the family treatment. We roll up, it's right away. Do you guys want water? Uh, no. Okay, well, you want a drink? No. And we'll probably get asked on average four to five times, do you need anything? And I, I love that, man. That's what I, that's why I tell everyone like that's where my heart's at. Those are my favorite events. Um, two, I like one another story here, and then we'll move on to the next topic. Is there was a an event we did last year, and at the pickup, um, we came to pick everything up. They and I don't know if you guys have experienced this, but they'll sometimes ask you, do you want do you want one of the fl the centerpieces? Or like sometimes they're like, hey, we have extra wine left over or extra this or you want to take some of the cake home. It's it's a plus. It's a plus that I don't think a lot of people talk about or, or expect. But um, have you guys ever experienced that where you, you know, they're like, hey, take really? some I took I, I took some champurrado and some conchas home. I don't know if you know what oh. conchas are. Is that Mexican sweet bread? Bro. Yeah. <laughs> one of those, hey, man, one of those, with some one of those with some coffee. It's a wrap. Yeah, hell yeah. It was a good day. I've never got offered like centerpieces or anything, but definitely like if like for birthday parties, like the goodie bags of like candy in it. Um, uh, somebody actually from her sweet 16 that we did last October, this past October, she gave us like a, she gave everyone like these boxes with bath bombs in it. So she gave us that. Uh, I've, I've took like leftover food. They're like, yeah, take the extra food or take some extra cake. And it'll literally come to us like, with a box. And like, here you go. This is just leftovers. Like if you guys want it. And most of the time we take it, like, okay, we'll just eat it for dinner tomorrow or lunch or something like that. So it's, it's pretty cool that, you know, a lot of clients out there are willing to be like, here, you know, we care for you. Like, here you go. Like, enjoy. Yeah. And let's just be honest. Sometimes they need to just get rid of it. So we're kind of doing yeah. them a favor, you know? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah, so let's move on to discuss getting uniforms for your business. Um, what are the positives here? What do you, you know, obviously you guys have uniforms for your business. So do we. Uh, what, why would anyone even want to do this? Well, I mean, for me, I, I felt like my first like, couple events when I didn't have a uniform, um, it made me feel like I was, this is more just, just a side gig, you know, you know, people call it a side gig and it made me feel like other people think that I'm not taking this seriously. And I'm just, this is like just a, a side thing for me when I'm realistically trying to turn this into like, you know, a six figure business. So with a six figure business comes, you know, a uniform. So I think it's a good idea to at least have a polo. If you're not going to have any, you know, uniform pants or like slacks, have at least a polo with, you know, your name on it, your logo on it. Um, once, once I, people started seeing me in my, my polo shirts, I think people started kind of like realizing like, oh, this is more than just a side gig. Like this is his guy's business. Hmm. So I think it looks very professional and, uh, only because I have a polo doesn't mean that uh, I use it all the time. I think I also dress appropriately um, wherever I'm at. Um, so like if I'm in an outside event and it's beaming hot, I'll try to like, you know, dress a little more fresh, you know, have a have a T-shirt or, or you know, I have I have uniforms from, from my other business that I'll let them know, like, hey, I'm going to be wearing a T-shirt and dress a little more fresh. I think uh, also kind of looking the part of wherever you're at at an event really, really helps Mm, definitely. 
Yeah, no, I 100% agree with Hans, and I want to piggyback off what he said about, like, you know, you, you're running a business, and you don't want it to make you look like a side job, but like a side gig. Um, when I first started TKR events, my wife was real big on, like, trying to, like, make sure we dress nice and stuff like that. So I was like, okay. I said, let's get custom-made shirts, you know, cheap ones that said TKR events on it, and that was it. Now, a couple of months later, we're getting regular T-shirts, especially for the summer when it's, like, hotter outside. We're doing, like, small birthday parties. Or I like to wear my stuff even when I'm just walking around, like, on a normal day. We're going to get shirts with the back because obviously we do more than just photo booth, but it's going to be a picture of our photo booth. The other side is going to be like the bouncy house at the bottom. is going to be like the balloon garlands. And then it's going to be a QR code that says book us for your party, uh, TKR events. And it's gonna, the QR code, they can scan our backs. Like someone's walking behind us and they, they read it. And they're like, oh, wait, there's a party vendor. So if they don't want to stop us or like maybe like bother us while we're doing something, they can scan the QR code on our backs. It's going to be a big QR code and they'll be able to go straight to our website. Has so that's done... What's that? Has anyone ever done that? No, I just kind of thought about it randomly. I was like, oh, because I, I just got the sticker on, uh, what was it called? The, that website uh, where I got my business cards. Uh, Instaprint? Uh, Instaprint, yeah. I I just ordered more business cards, and something on Instaprint just showed me, like, you could put a QR code on shirts and stuff like that. So, you know, that sounds like a good idea. So I'm going to do it at this local store in my mall that, you know, they could put whatever. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to try it. If it works, it works. If it don't, it don't. But I got this big uh, magnet for my car that I'm going to put in the back of my trunk area because I have a Jeep. Let's so go. I'm going to have big magnet with the QR code that says T car events. And it's going to be the same picture as the back of the shirt. So I'm like, I'm going to start just repping my QR code anywhere and everywhere I possibly can. So people can just start scanning and trying to book us. But then back to the whole thing with the polos. I think that's great. Uh, I like how you drew actually have with your name on it. That says Andrew, because then people know who you are. They know your identity. They're, oh, the, the guy, Andrew, the photo booth owner, you know, I don't have my name on mine. It's, it's something I'm thinking about now, but I like the whole having T car events. It makes you look professional. It makes you stand out. And it shows people that, you know, you're, you're a professional business, that you're not just wearing a hoodie and some slacks and you're just trying to just make some extra money. Um, because I noticed when I was working at jobs like Wendy's and, and like other like burger spots when I was a kid and like the gas station and stuff like that, I'm wearing their company logo on my, on my body. And it's also a version of free marketing yourself. You're marketing yourself by just putting on clothes. You know, so I, I like the whole dressing up thing. It's nice. I, I, and I dress up for work. Look, I, I just got out of my nine to five right now. I'm dressed up. Um, you know, so I just, I want to do it for my business as well. Dress the part, like, like Han said. Love it. Yeah, man. We all, we all agree with these points. And, um, I think having uniform is a real plus because sometimes people are a little bit drunk, they may not recognize you, but if they could see like your shirt, they see, Oh, okay. That's the photo booth guy, you know, before, you know, also too, you know, quick little plug to our next episodes, we are now selling merch for the photo booth. One of the designs will be uh, the, oh shoot, it's all dirty. One of the designs will be, I'm here for the photo booth. This is a dirty shirt. We are moving stuff here, but like it's, it's a lot easier for people to, to look at you and be like, okay, this is one of the vendors. This is someone here that's working versus if you just roll up and you know, Hans is wearing a red polo that may not tell anyone anything. They may just be like, who is this stranger here? Like, why is this guy here? And there's been plenty of times before where I was wearing a regular shirt where people have rolled up to me while I'm I'm walking into their house and been like, hey, who are you? You know, like a few times where it got a little kind of sketch where the guy was like ready to fight. But I was like, oh, I'm here for the photo booth. And it was like a different story. So love it, man. That That is a gem right there. I think that was a really good segment. Um, let's move forward to branding and logos. Let's talk about logos first. Um, you guys make your own logo. You guys had someone make it for you or how did you guys go about with your logos? So yes, the first one I made, cause I've updated my logo two times already just because I've evolved, but, uh, the, and for my other company, the mechanical bull one, I still use it, but I went to, I think like freelogos.com or something. And like, it lets you design it there. Um, and then, uh, it gives you what I liked about that website is it gives you like, a like a built-in invoice with your logo on it, like a built-in letter with your logo on it, oh. built-in everything with a logo on it. So it really, so you literally just copy and paste what, it, you know, the client's info. So I really like that. Um, it builds the invoices for you and you could attach them to HoneyBook or whatever other it's program. You want to use. Uh, so the, they give you like a logo. No, no, no. The, the whole thing is it's called free logos .com and they'll give you like a, a very small logo. But like, if you want like a high definition logo, then you have to pay. 
And I think like their cheapest option is like $50. But uh, I would now not use it because now I know how to like design a little bit because of my templates. But when I first started, especially before I was in two photo booths and I was doing just the mechanic bowls, that really helped. So for people that are, you know, barely starting, you might want to look at it. But I mean, if you're going to get into photo booths also, probably start with Canva and see what you could do because you're going to end up using it anyways. Well, most most people use Canva. Hmm. Yeah. Um, now mine, so my my original logo for TKR Reds, which no one's actually ever seen, of uh, the original was it was actually a lowercase T, a big capital R, a big capital K. Like the K was supposed to stand out for I don't know what reason, and then the R was supposed to be small, just like the T, and then the party starts here was supposed to look like a rainbow because that's my slogan. The party starts here. It's a, it's like a rainbow, but then I was like, ah, I scratch it. I got it. I actually got it made off of that uh, like a free logo maker that uh, Hans was just mentioning. And my brother actually went to school for graphic design and art. So that was his major. So I reached out to him, you know, he's younger than me, but I was like, yeah, Justin, you know, I need your help. Uh, I want my logo to look like this, but then I wanted to have the slogan maybe at the the top, like a rainbow. He's like, nah, he's like, I, don't worry. Let me do what I got to do. And he made the logo for me. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> okay, cool. He like did TKR events like red and black because I told him what I wanted. And then he put the the slogan at the bottom. The party starts here. He's like, listen, the slogan at the bottom will look a lot more better than at the top, like a rainbow or something like that. I'm like, okay, yeah. And it just kind of from there. So, you know, I um, I think for us as like you know like influencers now and, and educating people, um, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I feel like a lot the big mistake I see a lot of people starting off. They obsess over a logo and sometimes can take them weeks to decide. Do you guys agree with me? If you guys disagreed, let me know why, but I'm going to make a statement. And I think for a photo booth company, a logo isn't as important as people think it is. I don't think it's ever going to decide if you're getting booked or not. A, a logo probably won't directly make you money. It's more, you know, for, just like the website business cards and also does make you look professional to have a logo. But is that, you guys agree with me? You disagree with me? Yeah. So I, I want to go and piggy off that. Uh, so I think the name is more important than, than your logo, but also I would, uh, I go by that. Keep it simple, stupid. Um, and I like to keep it simple for the fact that if you, if you make like, you know, those people that like, I don't know if you guys been reached out by like on Instagram, but like logo makers, you know, like, oh, I'm going to reach out to this company and like show them a portfolio of the logos I made for all these companies. And maybe they'll, you know, hire me as a graphic artist to make their logo or update their logo. Their logos look pretty cool, especially when they look cartoonish and they make you into a cartoon and stuff like that. That's cool. But good luck putting that on a shirt. Mm. You know, so my thing is I try to keep it simple where like you could put this. So if you're going to put this logo on your website, you, you know, it also wants to go on your uniform. How are you going to put a whole, you know, freaking cartoon on your chest? Like you can't, uh, and especially if you want it embroidered and like stitched, like, yeah, good luck with that. Maybe you could do like a press one, but yeah. Um, so I like to keep it simple just for the fact that I, I, I want it embroidered into like a, into a shirt and they can't do that many like crazy things if it's embroidered. So that's, that's my suggestion. Don't, don't obsess too much on your logo just because you need to keep it simple, just because you want to also put in other things that's going to make it easier for you to put it. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I yeah, also I... see a, a, a lot of people overdoing their logo. Sometimes it's like way too much going on. You know, I've, have you guys ever seen anyone's logo and been like, this is a lot to process. I sometimes think less is more, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I, I agree, man. I see a lot of people doing the same uh, camera aperture, with their name, a slogan, a character of themselves, and then like another thing on the side is just like that's just way too much. I, I think I think a solid logo is something that's easy on the eyes, something that's easy to read, and and um, yeah, you know, I, I really like your 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 mechanical bull logo, Hans. I think that's it's my favorite logo, man, and that's the one I got at freelogos.com, and I haven't changed it since then, man. I love that logo. It's so good, like yeah. the hat. You no, gave me the hat, and that's sick. I would say I would say give a give your business card or something obviously with your logo on it, uh, a shirt, business card, anything that you have your logo on your Instagram picture, uh, for your social media pages. Um, give it the billboard treatment. By billboard treatment, I don't know if you ever guys heard of the billboard treatment, which is like when you're passing by a, a highway going 50 miles an hour and there's those big billboards. They they like like Drew Drew said, less is more. 
they'll put like big words that say like two or three things and then you automatically know what it is and it took you literally maybe 2.5 seconds to pass that sign and you already know what it was what it is and who to contact like for example state farm like a good neighbor state farm is there that's it that's all they have they yeah. don't have flat or anything like that or colors state farm is here or something like that like and you already know oh wait that's an insurance company you know what i mean so for example if you have a photo business mine is tkr events the party starts here that's it. There's no stars. There's no logos. There's no flags. There's nothing behind it. Just TKR events. The party starts here. That that explains it all. The party starts here. Oh, well, their, their, their first thought is, oh, it's a party rental company. They said the party starts here. Like, okay, let me look into it. You know, that's why I chose that slogan because I thought it was pretty cool. And I, I knew no one had it. I was like, no one has the party starts here. You, you know? know, perfect segue to the next topic is branding, which I think you just kind of made a really good point is, the, the party start here slogan that is not, you know, you know, you hear TKR events. It's not, it's not like, Oh, it's a photo booth company. It's okay. They're an event company because you are, you're doing balloon backdrops. You're doing 360. You're doing DJ services. What else? Bouncy house. What else do you guys have going on? Like uh, we, we do decorations. Uh, we have, uh, we're actually partnering now. Uh, this is something in the talks for May of this year. We're actually going to start partnering with a florist company. Hmm. Yeah, we're gonna start partnering with a florist company, and they're gonna kind of like uh, white label with us. Like, I'm gonna get them events. They're gonna, we're gonna get them, you know, vice versa. Uh, somebody that my wife knows. We, I try. What I try to do, like I've always told you guys, is I've always try. If someone comes to me, you know, because I'm promoting myself as the party business, and if someone comes to me, asks me, "Hey, do you guys have this, or do you guys know someone who has this, or something like that?" They're automatically gonna think I have it because I don't really specify that I don't have certain things. I just say, "Okay, I have my party rental business." So if someone asks me, "Hey," Do you have marquee letters? Me personally, I don't have marquee letters. Like it's not my business. I don't have storage for that stuff, but I do know someone who has marquee letters. So every time I do um, have someone reach out to me for stuff like that, I call the lady. I say, Hey, I have an event for you, marquee letters, this and this. And she gives me like a hundred bucks. You know what I'm saying? So like I'm getting, my thing is I like to get paid off of other people's work in that case. So like, for example, the 360 company that I was working with before I'm about to get mine, you know, I was giving her a ton of events and she was every time she gave me a hundred dollars, hundred dollars. I think last year I probably made like $3,000 by just giving her events. So yeah. like, I, I want to be that company that, you know, doesn't say, Oh, I don't, yeah, no, I can't help you. I don't have this. I either try to find it. And if I really, really can't find it for them, then I'm like, okay, like I can't, I can't find this for you. I don't know. Like they're like the, the one thing I couldn't find for her and I tried and I tried and I just, it was too expensive because she had a certain budget was the photo booth, the new photo booths that people are using. But it's not photo booth. It's like a, a, it's like a magazine box. The cover. Magazine. Yeah, the magazine cover box with the lights inside. It's like really big. Someone reached out for that, and I was like, I tried. I looked for like a week, and I was like, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I don't know anyone who does this. I, I don't do it personally. So I, I did. I looked up. It was just because her budget was like $800, and people were renting that stuff for like $1,500, $1,600 to, for that big thing. So I was like, yeah, no. I did think about getting into it myself, and I was like, yeah. No, this is not something I'm interested in. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Hans, do you have any uh, any gems about branding and, you know, how that would be, you know, how someone can apply branding to actually grow their, their rental business? Oh, I think you're, you're on mute. You're muted. My bad. I live near an airport, so <laughs> I try to mute out all these. I think someone's uh, learning how to fly, so they're flying pretty low. Anyways, um, anyways, yeah. I think uh, Tyler kind of touched up on everything that I would have talked about. Um, I have zero slogans for my Tito's Toros, uh, but I mean, if anyone knows what Toros means, it just means bowls. So um, I guess that's my way of branding is just letting them know that, you know, I have bowls. Um, but I mean, Tyler touched on every subject that I could have possibly touched on. Um, just, you know, throw your name out there and and uh, make it look good, man. Um yeah, I mean Tyler. Tyler covered everything. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I just got into it because I work with a bunch of vendors, man. I work with so many people. I know people who do tables and chairs, other bouncy houses, and even if like like for example, I only have one photo booth right now. I work with DJ Los. I work with Aguardo from Photo Booth One Hundred One Family. You know, if I need someone to run that second event for me, I either white label it or I'll just give it to them and ask them for a hundred dollars out of it. They do it. They've done it for me. Uh so I don't like to say no to the client because. I just feel personally that it makes me look bad. It makes me feel like, oh, that's that party company that never has a availability or is never open to get us anything. So like, don't book with them because they're always like they don't they're they're short on stuff, you know. Yeah, I think for branding, I would say I just just try to keep the same colors. I mean, uh, 
I I my favorite colors at least at least for me are uh black and white for my for my for my brand. Um so I guess we haven't touched on that part of the branding but like colors. Uh try to keep uh keep it to like a maximum of three colors but I like to keep black and white just because it could go literally with like almost any event that I could think of. I think the only event it can't go with is like a rainbow themed event like then I'm kind of screwed I guess on a rainbow themed event but I haven't had one. So but yeah like I literally my bulls go with weddings like my my links my brand colors go with weddings they go you could you could you know look professional at a king say you could look professional at a wedding you could look professional at a baby shower so, but uh I, I i specifically only limit myself to two colors just to kind of uh be easy to brand my colors and know that oh that that's his those are his colors it's easy to tell me apart from other people so smart yeah. I, I, I like colors drew for your uh your business you know uh your photo booth rental business I, I like your 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 logo's nice i always liked your logo the you know when you're talking about rustic yeah, yeah. um so we for me branding what, what i what i like um yeah. we like to keep is our website our social media the the type of content we're making is geared towards our clientele right you can tell from you know my rental page from our website that we're not a corporate type of company, right? There's you can find a lot of corporate rental companies where it's it has that more professional look, right? The terminology, the 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 content, the videos, everything is geared towards the clients, and I think that's a really good. It's a, the smartest thing you can do. So, it, like, let's just say, you know, you want to target those corporate events, and um, it wouldn't make sense for you to make your content and your website geared like, oh, you know, we're, we do a lot of weddings or this and that. You want to gear it towards the people that are going to give you the money. That makes the most sense. Um, and also too, you know what I love about branding? It's not something I think a lot of people think about, but it's something you can, you pick up as you keep going. You're kind of finding your identity as you, you're doing events. So like, I didn't like initially when I started you guys, it was never about like, I had no idea. We're just an affordable rental company. And it just so happened that we're doing the quinceañeras, the weddings, the birthday parties. And it just, it's kind of a process if, if, if you're not like planning it. So I tell everyone like, you know, do your homework, do your research, um, know what kind of company do you want to be? Do you want to be high-end rental company making, you know, thousands of dollars per event for, for corporate or people that have really high-end weddings? Or do you want to be more of an affordable rental company, a more fun family vibe company? And, um, that's kind of where you can make that distinction. Um, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I agree. You're, you're finding your target market and you know, that's where people should, there are those photo vendors or DJs and stuff who look for just weddings and corporate events and that's it. Um, actually something I've been trying to break out of DJ Lowe's and he knows this, I'm breaking his shell a little bit with this where I'll tell, like he likes to do like the nighttime nightclub events, the, the, the uh, weddings and like, um, corporate events like those type, those three, and I'm like, hey, you gotta start doing like sweet sixteens and like birthday parties and stuff. And he does it, uh, but he's trying to break his shell. I'm like, you know, start promoting that stuff as well. So you know, he's like, oh, fine, I'll do it. You know, I'll give it a shot. Love it. Yeah. Um. All right. Let's let's talk about the last topic here, and it's the importance of linking up with the other vendors at uh at an, a venue. And I'm not. We're not talking about you know. We're talking about making relationships the day of the event with the other, you know, vendors like the, the DJ, the mobile bartenders and any, anyone else in the space. I'm not talking about, you know, networking to grow business, even though that these relationships you can make can grow business, but we're just talking for the immediate event and the importance of it. I know Hans, you had a really, really good point. Um, you know, a, about the power that one, that one situation you had, do you mind sharing that? Yeah, man. So as you guys know, um, uh, mechanical bowls is what I do as well. Um, just know who needs a lot of power. The DJ needs a lot of electricity. Mechanical bulls require a lot of electricity. I I was at this event where um I forgot they were I don't I don't think they were a photo booth but they they needed some sort of lighting, and uh I think they were like marquees but they were also there for other like decorations and stuff and they needed lighting to make it like look nice like like light up the 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 decorations that they're doing. And they wanted to plug into the same outlet. And I had just let um, the the person running it know, like, hey, this is my outlet. Like, this is mine. Don't touch it. 
don't let anyone plug into it. And we have like, you know, this little ditzy girl, like plugging it in. I'm like, yo, like stop that right now. Like before you do that, kind of like talk to the person like, hey, like, is it okay if I plug it in right here? Because I told her, as soon as you turn all these lights on and it trips out the power, it, you're going to kill my fun here. And I have a good vibe going on here. People are having fun. So just kind of uh, be courteous and be conscious of like, there's electricity needs to be shared. Um, especially when it's like at a, like a ranch or barn houses where you're going and you know, their panels might not be as, you know, updated electricity might not be as updated as you think it is. So just be conscious of that and, and talk to the vendors and, and let them know like, Hey, can I plug in to the same spot? And they'll politely tell you no, but if you just do it, then I kind of did tell her like, Hey, don't do that. Like I was kind of firm and mean about it just because I knew that as soon as she was going to turn those on and it was going to trip the power and my 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 whole vibe with my bowl was gonna like die because once once that happens everybody leaves like oh okay it's probably gonna take like five ten minutes and everybody leaves so just just talk to your vendors and and know where to set up or where to plug into and there's usually someone assigned to it but sometimes they're running around and they don't you know they just tell you an area so just just be mindful about that I love it yeah I I, I love reaching out to the DJ like you know if we're there just kind of introducing myself and uh, just saying, you know, we'll be over here with the photo booth. Uh, you know, if you need anything, man, don't hesitate. Let me know. Uh, you know, when it comes to like the vendor meals, again, like we're talking about, like if you're busy and you need to grab a plate, uh, just let me know. I'll be more than happy to swing by and grab you something. If you can't leave, you know, doing things like this goes such a long way, you know, like just being nice, being, being helpful and doing things for other people that you would probably want for them to do for you. And, you know, again, like if you guys are, if you're doing an event and you're offering prints, there will be times at the end of the night where you have some extra prints. And the last thing you want to do is go, go to the dance floor and hand them to the bride or find the event coordinator. So what we do is I typically will go to the DJ and say, Hey, I got to go. So can I leave these with you? And if maybe you can make an announcement at the end, when you're packing up last song, say, Hey, anyone that didn't get their strips, they're right here. So it's, it, it, it's just a beneficial place to be. And um, being kind is the first thing, but like, you just never know when you may need a favor, you know? Mm -hmm. um, there's been times where I've, I've not brought gaff tape and there was like no way around it. I would need some tape. So I just asked the DJ like, hey, do you have any extra tape? Maybe I can buy a roll off of you or whatever. And they'll be like, most of the time, like, no, nah, don't worry about it. Here's some tape. So, you know, it, it's it's a definitely a, a positive uh Tyler, I know you talk to probably every vendor. You're that that chit chatty guy that that has a lot to say. Do you do you make friends with the vendors? And if you do, like, uh, is there ever been a time where it's been useful, or have you been useful? Absolutely. The first uh, type of vendors I started reaching out to the most before I started talking to like other photographers and etc. were the DJs. And I've always took your advice. The minute I walk into an event. Obviously, my priority is to set up the photo booth, make sure my, my business is running smoothly, my software is running. Then I see the DJ setting up and I give him some time. You know, obviously, he doesn't want to be hovered while he's setting up. So I'll let him set up. The minute I start seeing him test out music to make sure his sound is good, you know, I know he's not busy, uh, too busy. Like he's just prepping his sounds and stuff like that. I'll walk up to him respectfully. Hey, my name is Tyler from TKR Events. I'm actually the photo booth vendor. Uh, I give him my business card and I tell him, hey, can I actually get your business card? I always ask for theirs too. So I can always have their contact. I have probably over a hundred business cards by now of DJs. And um, I asked him, I said, Hey, if you guys don't have a photo booth company, because I, maybe you might, you might not, I don't know. Cause maybe some photo, maybe some DJs do have, and they just didn't, didn't want to bring theirs that day. Um, I've met DJs who are like, yeah, no, we have a photo booth. Like, you know, but we'll, we'll let you know if we need anything or anything like that. Um, she'll, hold on, I'm sorry. Um, they'll be like, uh, but, and then you have, I'm sorry. Then you have those other DJs who are like, Oh yeah, no, I could definitely use you, man. And I've had DJs get me events because, you know, I, you know, just introduce myself. I say, Hey, you know, I'm the photo booth owner. If you guys know anyone who's looking for a DJ for any events. And I actually right away at the sweet 16 I had last year was like, yeah, I actually have a sweet 16 next, next year lined up for April. Uh, and they're looking for a photo booth. I was actually looking to reach out to a company cause I don't have, like he said that he didn't have time to run a photo booth business and a DJ business at the same time. So he's like, I've been looking for a photo booth vendor. So he's like, let's do it. Um, I, I just talk to everyone, man. If I see a photographer there, I'll reach out to them. Uh, videographers, I reach out to them. You know, I get, I just collect business cards. And then if I ever need somebody, I always have somebody on hand. More than, more than, I have more of, 
more than one person of each. So if one DJ is busy, I have five more lined up ready to go. Yeah, I like to always talk to the DJ. Only if I'm there and we're staying, I I go to the DJ and I say, hey, um, please don't do a photo booth as uh, an announcement. Photo booth will be here for five more minutes. I hate that. That's like the worst thing they can do is make that announcement five five minutes because when they say that, everybody's going to go to the photo booth. And then that line is going to be 20, 25 extra minutes of photo booth usage. So I like to to just, you know, reach out to the DJ and say, hey, I'll, I'll come. Um, if you don't mind, I'll come 20 minutes before we're going to pack up to make a, a, an announcement. Because if they're doing it, man, five minutes before after, or before the event ends, it's a headache. It's a headache. Yeah. So I like to I, just, just make things clear and be like, you know, uh, just don't do it. Because sometimes the, the DJ is not doing it to be mean. They don't know. And sometimes the event planner will will give the DJ notes and announcement to make at certain times. So, yeah, yeah. I, I always kind of like reversing what you said. I like to tell the DJ when the event first starts that the photo booth's open. That's what I like. I like to tell the DJ, hey, the photo booth's open because that gives me the chance right there for all those 10, 15 people to come in, wait in line. So I'm recording them in line to show people, hey, look, this is what your photo booth line is supposed to look like. Look how long the line is because everyone's coming at the same time. And then I have enough people to record a few people using the photo booth. So then I'm done for the rest of the day. I don't have to do no more media. I already got those. I usually put like six or seven groups of different people in my social media posts. And then I'm done. Everyone else, I don't put them in the videos because I'm like, okay, I'm not going to record every single person. They're going to think I'm, I'm freaking weird having a camera at them every time someone jumps in the thing. So I'll do it like the first six or seven groups of people, and then I'm done. And then I'll just record my stuff. I'll record my prop table. I'll record myself talking. So I like that. I like to get them going when it first starts. And then after when the party's done, everyone used the photo booth already. So by the end of the event, people are already kind of tired of it. Yeah. And a uh, good point, too. I'm glad you mentioned that. There could be a time where you guys are set up or uh, they put you in, in the hallway where people can't see it. So it's actually a good thing if you tell the DJ like, hey, if you can make a couple reminders that we do have a photo booth and this is where it's located. Because I've had events, you guys, no joke, where they it's the venue space. Then there's another room for just a photo booth. And there's it's like some of the most it's like the saddest event. Five photos were taken and I was there for four hours. <laughs> and I, I realized like the customer was just like, oh, we can't believe people use it. And I was like, I mentioned, to, I was like, you know, we mentioned, you know, this isn't a great spot, but I, in the after I'm like, what could I, what could have I, what could have I done? And I'm like, I probably could have had the DJ make that announcement. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I mean, that's you crazy. Can only do so much, you can only do so much, but if you're trying your best to get people to use it, you're making, you know, the DJ announcements, you're telling the client that this isn't an ideal spot. You're covering yourself versus not caring, not making any effort and just allowing the booth not to be used. Cause then you could end up losing that customer in the long run because they're going to be like, yeah, it's not worth it. I paid this guy $700 for five photos. Yeah, no. Yeah. I agree with that, man. Um, every time, every time I, 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 first of all, I always arrive like even like it takes me like about an hour to set up for prints. Right. I always arrive like at least like an hour and a half to two hours before the, you know, I need to start just so I give myself 30 minutes to an hour to kind of like gauge and like tell the, like beg the customer to not put me in the hallway, like how it happened. I mean, sometimes they don't have a choice, but then, but yeah, that's when I'm like, Hey, like, don't be surprised. It's not going to be used. And then like how but you I'm said, surprised. you guys have to ask the client where they want the photo booth for certain venues, because I don't know, I guess maybe it's just different over here in New Jersey the venues have really have like specific spots for all these things. And over here, at least like I've had venues where like, yeah, no, the photo booth's always designated over there for like when we do events, I, I've never had a situation where, unless it was like at like a venue where the client's in charge of like where the tables go and stuff like that. Like those little Knights of Columbus, like little venues that you bring, you have to even bring your own food and stuff like that. Then I guess, yeah, they decide where you want, where they want it. But the venues, like the wedding venues and the corporate venues, they're all like, Hey, this is our designated DJ area. You're going to be next to the DJ or you're going to be in the back of the room. I've had like back of the room situations, but since most of the time I, I bring my LED inflatable and it lights up, you can't miss that. So people know what that is. Now, most events are, or there's at venues, there's always a spot where they're like, Oh, D, D, uh, DJ's here, photo booth here. But you know, there are a lot of parties where they, they have such a lot of such a huge amount of things going on. 
And the photo booth is usually a, a, a place where they're just kind of like, it's the least important thing. In my opinion, you'll have like the dessert table and stuff, but it's not all the time. Most, most of the time it's like you say, you know, there's like a layout and then they're like the photo booth is usually here. Yeah. And I do want to say that that's pretty sad. You know, I do take that like, kind of like, like, dang, I'm a photo booth owner. So to hear that sometimes gets me a little upset where they're like, basically we're like, the janitors of the party business you get what i'm saying like no, we're basically what do you wait what i'm not cleaning I'm, anything up no 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 what i mean janitors of the party business i'm just using terminology is like they pri a lot of people prioritize what's first so it's like oh the dj obviously dj's number one i've had i've had situations where uh, i have had a customer last year who told me like they couldn't afford me as a photo booth operator because they had to choose the dj over me mm -hmm. and i lower my price just to get that event. I had to literally budge my price down. I'm like, okay, how about if I do it for this price? You know, and then I see that other people say, okay, the DJ and then the photographer, obviously second because of pictures, you know, people taking pictures of dancing, like for weddings, I'm saying. And then maybe it'll be like the the LED robot or something because they want that crazy hour or something like that because that connects with the DJ. And then obviously like the dessert table because people got to eat and then like the photo booth, you know, uh, you get you get what I'm saying now? Like they're prioritizing us at the end. I got to apologize for anybody that is a janitor. <laughs> Tyler <laughs> I said the least important thing. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. No, I get what you, I get what you meant. I totally get what you meant. But it, it it's true. It's true. Getting a photo booth is a luxury. It's not it's not something that like if it's not there the party's going to be ruined, right? Like 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 Tyler was saying, the DJ, the food, the dessert, the freaking coffee, the uh, everything else, right? And it's again, look, it's hard to hear that, and but it's something I realized, and I, I came come come to terms with it, and having that mindset, knowing that it's a luxury and it's it's the least important thing, it takes a lot of pressure off of me, which is great. It allows us to to not really freak out when things go wrong. We can always fix it, and there's always solutions, but. But yeah, man, back, back, back to what we were saying too, like, you know, other, other reasons why we should be connecting with other vendors at these events, you know, it's not just the DJ I'm talking like, you know, the, the, bar, the yeah, bartenders, you know, if, if you run into a party and you see Hans there with the mechanical bull, like making these relationships, I'm not even talking for long-term reasons, just introducing yourself, being polite, saying, if you need anything, let me know, you know, especially for the drop-off they will look out for you. You know, if you introduce yourself, I'm leaving this equipment here. You know, if you can, man, just keep an eye on it. Like I'm not like no pressure. And this is, I'll do this every single time. If I get a chance, there's been times where I go to pick up the booth and the DJ has some props that they, that they picked up, uh, that people left on the dance floor. Or they left it near here. And it's just like little things like that, that, that really help. And, um, you know, I've met, you know, obviously we're not talking about networking to make money, but that's usually how a lot of my relationships do start too. It's just being polite and just seeing if I can help out or vice versa. So, yeah. I mean, not another, another reason why I like talking to vendors is plan my exit, man. Cause if they hire you, uh, I was at this quince and it was from 6 PM to like 1 AM. They had this banquet hall for a while. I mean, a while. And they only had me from like six to nine. And I knew that uh, I started planning ahead because they had me in a corner. It was a really nice spot. I had a premium spot. A lot of people used it. But they had me in a corner where like other vendors were going to be right behind me. As, as Like I set up first and then there was other vendors. So I let them know, hey, I'm cleaning up by this time. Around this time, can you start planning for me to maneuver my way out? Because I'm not going to leave my equipment here. This is an hourly print rental. I'm coming out. So that's that's also like plan ahead not just right there and try to network i knew i mean that's a great thing but when i'm there i'm also planning on how to maneuver out of here because i don't want to stay there the whole day and uh, like leave my equipment i mean I, that hasn't happened to me thankfully i've heard of other people that had to leave their equipment because they just couldn't you know couldn't maneuver out but i try to avoid that just so i don't have to like take more time because for me time is money and if i could leave that night um just plan ahead and talk to, cause it was like, it was like the snack bar, the, the Mexican snacks that they put like a oh, chamoy and stuff and the chips and everything. So I, I asked the lady nicely, like, Hey, at this time I'm leaving at that time, can you like hug the wall, make your line and tell them to like hug the wall as well. I'll maneuver out. I'll pack everything before I start moving. And it should only take me like, I'll only take like 20 minutes of just taking my stuff out. And uh, she was super cool with it. So, um, 
just be aware of that because you know some event spaces are square with one exit and then fire exits but most of the time you can't use the fire exits because they're there for fire exits so just kind of uh talk to your vendors and 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 uh come up with a plan of like hey i'm leaving at this time what time are you leaving oh i'm, I'm here till 2 a.m cool i'm not like let's plan something out and usually if you if you are nice about it they'll 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 maneuver around you same with me if my mechanical bull is somehow like blocking somebody I'll tell them like, hey, around this time, we're going to turn off the inflatable because they fall in an inflatable. We're going to turn it off and we're going to fold it to the side so then they can leave. And then we'll inflate it again in five minutes. And usually they appreciate that. So if you communicate that with me, I could plan ahead so I could tell anyone that's waiting in line, like, hey, sorry for the inconvenience. So that's one thing to keep in mind is just plan your exit because it's easier to set up and coming in, but coming out when there's a whole crowd, good luck. Mm. But just remember, com coming in is very important too. I learned this because coming in sometimes gets hard because a lot of people are coming in at the same time as you. Not just like the guests, but like a lot of employees and stuff like that. And you're like going through the front of the venue and walking through all their like lobbies and stuff like that. I always ask or I either ask the client or, or I'll call the venue myself and I'll ask if they have a loading zone, a loading and unloading zone. And a lot of them do. They have those back doors that they're willing to open those fire doors, Hans. And for a temporary temporary so you can bring your stuff in and out fast and like have quick quick exit and quick entrance um because i've had that i'm like hey is there any chance you guys could open the fire door so or like a, a back room or something that i could bring my stuff in and then bring it out and they've done it most of the, the time the venues are very nice about it like yeah no problem that's what we do for most of the djs because they have those big speakers and imagine rolling those big speakers and and the inflatable and all that stuff through a lobby with with chandeliers and glass, glass this, glass that. No, I don't want to risk that. So I always ask for like the back stuff where all the where they leave all like the the food, the food trays and all that stuff that they don't want guests to see. You know what I mean? I'd rather walk through that back back area rather than the front with all the chandeliers and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I like to, to also too like uh, before we wrap it up, I, I like to talk to the DJs and just get the 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 end time. Because sometimes, again, like it's happened before, you know, the communication from the client with us isn't as good as the their communication is with the DJ. Because the DJ is a huge part of the party without the music, without the announcing, without the emceeing. It's not it's not going to be as elevated as it's supposed to be. So there's been a few times where, you know, I just asked the DJ, I'm like, hey, when when are you leaving? And the DJ would, you know, it's happened twice. I can remember vividly the uh, DJ said uh, nine o'clock and I had. 11 on my schedule and if i never asked that dj i wouldn't have known the actual close time because the dj is like yeah they uh end at nine and we have to be out here at 10 because they're going to lock the doors and close close everything so that that saved me a completely another trip and an issue um back back then you know i didn't have a ton of photo booths so that actually was a friday event and that would have ruined my saturday event so me, that little communication there and just asking the dj like oh what time are you packing up or what, what time do they tell you the party's ending you know it's uh it's huge because when you book a photo booth you know it's it's not the same as a dj because dj's typically are you know depending on what type of photo booth service if you're doing a drop off you know the communication and everything is set in stone while back to where the communication with a dj it's usually a lot more detailed and um yeah so that's just my experience you know you, you you'll never know what you can learn and you know it never hurts to make some friends so uh let's wrap it up here you guys uh make sure to go follow tyler uh, link in the description, Hans, link in the description. Also, we do have a photo booth 101 mentor group chat where you'll have access to five mentors in that group chat. Um, I think today or tomorrow, we're going to be raffling off, picking one person to get one of these backdrops here, probably the purple haze one back here. And yeah, mentor group chat is a perfect place to ask whatever questions you have. If you want to elevate your business, if you want to learn how to get more leads to market, you want to learn software, you want to grow your business, Photo Booth 101 Mentor Group Chat, $199 right now, Friday or next Friday, price will be $499. So you will never get it at that $199 price point. It'll 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 be gone. So make sure to do that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy Valentine's Day. Make sure you call your loved one, your mother, your dad, your brother, your sister. Tell them you love oh, them. What was that? Well, how did you do so, that? That was so I don't cool. Know. <laughs> you, oh, Happy Valentine's what? Day. I'm a magician. Oh, wait, hold up. Let me try it. Let me try it again.